Hi, and welcome back to Brooks Nook, Always Learning. I hope y'all are doing well. I decided to actually start over um, with some of my seventh grade curriculum uh, review for the fall. And um, because I noticed that my energy level was really going down the other night. And so I wanted to give you a little bit more of my energy and who I am and my personality than, you know, me falling asleep. So, okay, first off, I just want to say that um, this video has not been sponsored by any of the curriculums or any of the tools that I use for homeschool. And I will start off with Homeschool Manager. It has really helped me keep track of all of uh, my son's work and his attendance and grades for everything and will make it easier to print out a report card at the end of the semester. Okay, so on this page, this is the schedule that my son sees when he logs in. And I'll click on an algebra assignment um, here in just a second. And you can see here there's the link to his external algebra course. So he can actually click on that and go straight to the login. And if you have his login saved, all he has to do is hit login. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to, for him to go straight to where he needs to go. On this page, you can see um, all the courses, and I'm able to actually put in that his algebra is externally graded and just fill in the actual score at the end of the semester since it's uh, recorded on his uh, course. For this one, I actually grade it myself, so I'm able to put a weight where the uh, homeschool manager will calculate the grade. Um, and so I can put a weight on certain aspects of his coursework um, say if it's paper or uh, it's not online or it's not externally graded and I have to grade it myself. This is the report card so you can generate a new report card or a transcript and it has all of your school information, the school name up at the top um, and all of that which makes things easier. You can also edit the holidays, put in different holidays um, so that it actually kind of grays that out and um, makes it orange on the schedule so that you can see you weren't in school during that time. And then uh, there's the logout. All right, so Blair's here in reading. Um, so my seventh grader has finished reading the Harry Potter books. He finished that at the beginning of the year and then he started on Lord of the Rings, um, Fellowship of the Ring. And then he is currently reading 1984. Um, before that, for his required books, he read The Giver and To Kill a Mockingbird. I do want to work in the future, uh, more toward integrating his history and literature. And I have been actually following and reading uh, the Susan Wise Bauer uh, Well-Trained Mind. Um, they have an academy online also. I have not used it yet. Um, it would be something definitely I would consider doing in the high school, at the high school level for him. Um, right now, I am just following that approach, um, at least for next semester. That is what I am formulating my plan off of. I'm not following it to a T. But since we do follow more of a classical style of homeschool, I think um, it's probably the best plan to follow and really the most economical if you're looking uh, to stay within a budget because homeschool curriculum, the all-in-one packages do get very expensive very quickly and it may not be exactly what you want. So for Spanish, this was kind of a, a fail on my end. Um, I used Breaking the Barrier. There is nothing wrong with this curriculum. It is excellent, very thorough. However, it was just a little ahead. So we are actually going to be moving to a different curriculum where he will have a one-on-one -on -one tutor and he has already actually met with him and really seems to enjoy it. So fingers crossed that it works out very well. Um, it was a little bit on the pricier and for one subject for homeschool, to be honest, but I think it will be worth it. And following the classical curriculum and um, doing that 
he really needs to have some kind of foreign language. I, um, I know that there is a huge push for Latin and he did have Latin last year. However, I feel that it's mostly important that he gets some kind of spoken foreign language as well and just the experience of that. My seventh grader has really enjoyed uh, Memoria Press for his American history. And this does not actually follow the classical curriculum like timeline, but I did want him to have a good solid foundation in American history and Memoria Press does an excellent job at that. Um, it's probably his favorite part of homeschool. He knows more about American history than I ever knew. We got two different sets. We got the 200 questions about American history set and then 13 col the story of the 13 colonies in the Great Republic. So for the 200 questions, um, this is more of a facts-based rote memorization. Who invented the steamboat and who was the 32nd president and those kind of questions. So we use the planning guide and um, for this one and that is at the front of the book for the 200 questions. And this set comes with the pre-made flashcards and it makes them easy to review on a daily basis so that when it, test time comes, he can pretty much ace it. Um, in Colonies in the Great Republic, uh, these are more like dis discussion and thinking type questions about um, what is read and the Gwerber text, which it's referenced in both of them. So um, there are no flashcards. So I actually have him go through and put, make his own vocabulary and facts to know flashcards based off of the book um, at the beginning of the week. And as he goes through, he learns those. So he has a test from each part and then brings it together. And it's a pretty big history curriculum. I think he's gonna know it very well. Um, he already does at the end of this first semester and he will tell you straight out that is his favorite class. So I'm really impressed with um, that part of Memoria Press. I've, um, we've used their Latin before and it was, it was also very good. Um, he didn't enjoy it quite as much, but I think that's more his preference for uh, one subject over another versus, you know, whether or not he actually liked their curriculum. For writing, um, we used IEW. B year one um, is for sixth through eighth grade. And if you start in seventh grade, you're supposed to do year one and then do year two in eighth grade. Um, it, I think it's made him already a more confident writer. We'll be doing some more things as we expand into um, the well-trained mind type curriculum. And he'll probably get some more practice writing uh, through that. But as far as just getting him to write and getting him to get stuff down on paper. It has been an excellent method for making him more, a more confident writer. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention with the, um, the whole ELA, English language literature, all of that fun um, is the grammar. So with IEW, they actually recommend Fix-It Grammar. Fix-It Grammar is wonderful. It comes with a student set and a like teacher parent set. And I learned so much from that, but I can't really grade him for that. It is really hard. It is hard for me. And I just don't know that I'm actually doing it right or that I'm doing what I should be doing. So we are going to be switching gears. So stay tuned for that video. So just talking about my history, I have higher level degrees in more of a math and science area. And I'm very passionate about 
mathematical learning. And it's something that I really looked into and I really have a lot of feelings about. So the child and I worked our tails off and I tutored him um, all the way through pre-algebra. It took a lot of my time. I think because I love it so much and I do so much with it, it was kind of taking away from my other two children. So for algebra, in the interest of us not getting in arguments and and uh, taking up all the whole day, I thought it might be better and better for him and better for me too if I let go and let someone else teach him. So we decided to do Shorman math online and it has been great. He's doing a great job. Um, it's not his favorite subject, but he's really good. He, he's such a good math student. And um, so Shorman's been wonderful. He understands it. It offers the opportunity to practice standardized test questions in math and mixes that in with assessment questions to make sure that the students understanding the concepts. It also is able to, to um, test them on a daily basis. Now, my son does not like this because the practice sets are worth the same amount as the final exams and the quizzes are worth less. So once he figured that out, he said, I feel like I'm taking a test every day. And he kind of is, but it's great practice. It works on a spiraling approach. So they're getting that repetition, it pops questions back in, and they don't forget the material. This is much, it's similar to what, the way that uh, Saxon works, except that you're also getting in more of the standardized test prep. It's a little bit more in the 21st century um, being online and how students are going to have to handle these kind of things in college. And I had to as well. So that has been wonderful for him. He also likes the idea that um, he can see how he ranks um, or how he relates to the average of a certain assignment. So you have the average of all the students who have actually taken it before him and he can see where he kind of fits in there. We have to talk to him, of course, about it's more about your personal best and not comparing yourself to others, but it does kind of help him see what others are doing, especially being that he is only in seventh grade and taking algebra. With that course, he gets a full credit of high school algebra and half a credit of geometry. And then next year, he will be getting the other half credit of the geometry and algebra too. So he will be put pretty far ahead in mathematics. I'm not sure how we're going to work that in. If he decides to transfer back into brick and mortar, which he is talking about wanting to do, and then, or if he transfers somewhere else, if they'll accept those credits or not. Um, I do like the fact that it's externally graded. So he, he is getting a little extra confidence to having something that I'm not completely over and it's not completely yet to me what his grade is. I think he enjoys that and knowing that it's really him and he's doing the work. Um, he's always been an A student and he's always done very well. So it works for him. Okay, so now for science. Um, okay, so we did dive, which is also Dr. Shorman he teaches this as well. It is, um, he did integrated chemistry and physics. Um, it's like a physical science course, like the ninth grade physical science course. The requirement is that they should be at least enrolled in algebra. So he's able to take it. There is a lab kit that you can order. You don't have to because the labs are online. We did go ahead and order the kit. It was kind of pricey, but um, I think it's good to have the hands-on experience. So the first semester goes over introductory chemistry, and then he'll be doing physics the second semester. Um, he's really done pretty well with this. Um, you can take the courses regular or honors. If you take it regular, you can have the, take the test open note. Um, I make him take his own notes. It's not something he can print off. He has to take notes. He has to look up the vocabulary. And he uh, did kind of learn the hard way that that can be kind of tricky even when you have open note tests that you should actually study really hard for the actual test and just have the notes there as a reference and not something to depend on. So 
you're able to, there's only two tests, so two major grades, but you can take each of them twice and the grades are averaged together to give you your final score. So it was a little hard for him. It was a harder course, but um, I think it came out very well. He did very well and he learned a lot and he was going to be well prepared for high school when he does take those uh, chemistry and physics type courses. So one thing to know about the dive science courses and the Shorman math is that Dr. Shorman um, has a strongly rooted Christian faith and that does come out in his lectures. So if you are looking for something more secular, this may not be for you. It um, is great for us. We are Christian. However, we do have some beliefs that aren't exactly like his. And um, my seventh grader will probably not be doing biology with uh, dive, but uh, we we did enjoy this and it's fine. My uh, son and I talk about what our beliefs are and we are very open about um what is presented and so as long as you have that discussion I think it will be okay but just know and look into it before you actually buy if you're looking for something a little bit more secular for science. Oh well thank you. I got this sweatshirt um it says out of this world at a space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, when I went to pick up my seventh grader from Space Academy. He had the opportunity to go uh, this fall. And so I actually was able to give him credit for that. And I put it in the homeschool manager and it's on his report card for the fall. And I did that and I think it's something good for colleges and high schools if he decides to transfer into high school somewhere. I think it's good when they're interviewing, when they're asking and they see that on there, they're like, well, What's this? You went to Space Academy. That's awesome. What did you learn there? It's a great talking point and it's something that he really enjoyed. So I am really proud of him for doing that. It gave him a lot of independence and he learned a great deal. Standardized testing. Such a wonderful subject, isn't it? Well, since a lot of the colleges are actually right now not even requiring an SAT and, or, nor an ACT. It may not be quite as big of a deal for admissions as it used to be. However, it's still important. I know, I'm not the best test taker. I never have been. My husband and I both have multiple graduate level degrees, so standardized testing has kind of been a big part of our lives and over and over and over again. We just can't seem to get away from them. The thing is, the more you practice these type of questions, the better you get. And it's good for them to see what it's like to take the test and they may not do that well. I remember a time when standardized tests were something you didn't study for. It was something you just woke up and rolled out of bed and went and took a test and made sure you had a number two pencil and an approved calculator. And it's no longer like that. People are nuts. They study like crazy. And so it's very intimidating and it's very nerve wracking and it's, it's a lot to put on kids. That all being said, I think it's a good thing to test your kid when you can. So in our state, we're required to do testing starting in third grade and every three years from there. I am planning to test my kids every year starting in third grade because I want to see how I can help them and how I might better be able to serve them as their teacher slash mom slash curriculum director slash principal slash administrator slash, you know, all the things, chef. Anyway. I want to be better be able to serve them in their curriculum and make sure I fill in the gaps in anything that they need so that they can improve. And therefore, we're going to implement some standardized test stuff into the curriculum. Now, as I said before, Shorman Math, it already includes it in his practice sets, which is wonderful. Um, I think this year we probably will look into more of like a book approach, maybe this summer or something, not nothing formal, but we do Wordly Wise. Um, and I bought that through the Homeschool Buyer Co-op online. 
I just bought a, um, like a license or a login or whatever so that we're able to do Worldly Wise online. And he does that every day of the week just to help increase his vocabulary. And then with his literature um, and going into more of the Susan Wise Bauer approach and uh, well-trained mind, we'll be doing more of the comprehension type things and finding, you know, the main idea and what the purpose of a passage is and that kind of thing. So all of these skills come together, but practice is important. You know, even if you have these skills, sometimes you have to tune them up a little bit and we will be doing that as we move forward. Uh, it's also a good gauge just to, as I said before, to make sure that homeschool is going the way you want it to go and things are improving as we move along. So that about wraps it up for today. Um, pretty soon we will be doing the second grade evaluation of fall and the curriculum that we use for my second grade son. And then moving forward, I'm going to go through what we're going to be using for this spring for both of them and how I plan that. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And I hope this has helped you to see what we do for homeschool at our house and how we plan things out. And thank um, you for watching Brooke Snook, always learning. Have a great day. I decided to, oops. <laughs>